Welcome once again to Digging Deeper with Backyard Farmer. I'm Kim Todd, and together we're going to unearth the biggest topics in Nebraska's gardening world. On today's program, we're going to focus on the growing number of local farmers markets and why it's a really good idea to not only visit them, but support them. You know, the foundation of Backyard Farmer is growing plants, particularly those that you can eat. We've seen this trending during the last decade as people become more concerned about where their food comes from, and you can either grow it in your own backyard or you can let somebody else do it for you and visit those local farmers markets. So joining me on today's program, we have Extension Educator John Porter, and we have Ag Promotion Coordinator with the Department of Ag, Casey Foster. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming inside on such a beautiful day. Thanks for having and us. <clears throat> and let's start talking first off about really the growing trend in the number of farmers markets, both probably across the state and across the nation. What are you seeing? With the Nebraska Department of Agriculture for the last many years, we've tried to identify the farmers markets and produce growers in the state. And so if you look back to 2000, we had about 39 farmers markets <coughs> identified in the state. And right now we have identified 100 farmers markets just within Nebraska's boundaries. The same as that increase, is about a 256% increase. That increase is also uh, in the number of produce growers. In 2000, we had 82 growers, and today we have 590 growers, a 700% increase. And this increase is not just in Nebraska, but it's all across the nation. So it's not a state-by-state -state, uh, trend. It's something that you see all across the state. When I talk to my counterparts from, from other states, they too have seen this large increase in the numbers. So does that also mean that if we have all those producers, are they competing with one another or is it really a great camaraderie? I've seen it to be a great camaraderie out there. Yeah, maybe they're competing against one another, but they share ideas, they support one another. Uh, you see a good partnership uh, working together, especially when you go into some of the smaller communities out there with smaller markets, people working together, and uh, it's a lot of the vendors working together to make uh, not just the market and their own stand successful, but their community as well. Yeah, I think uh, looking at, you know, you go down the aisle of the farmer's market and almost everyone has like the corn and the beans and the tomatoes. Those are the staples and like almost a, a large number of farmers <coughs> sell those. But really, I think it's sort of a way that farmers work together to find their own niche in the market, you know. Um, I live in Omaha and go to one of the farmer's markets in Omaha and you go to this, we go to this stand and we buy leafy greens and radishes and then we go to this stand and we buy, uh, you know, zucchini and eggplant because they all have uh, something a little bit different. They all have their own little niche. And so I think it's, it's, I think a good testament to the farmers and also the community that's supporting them that goes and, and buys all of this stuff. And we've really seen it as a trend of people wanting to, to eat healthier, but also know where their food is coming from, and even growing their own food and then turning into farmers. I think that's all been playing into this rapid growth that we've seen. That's a great point, John, because I've talked to a lot of produce growers, and one guy says he has the largest tomatoes in Nebraska. Another <laughs> one says he's got the widest variety of tomatoes. One guy says he has the sweetest sweet corn. One guy says he has the earliest sweet corn in Nebraska. So a lot of those growers like to really pride themselves on a couple of items, but also sell many other products as well. So what, what is the most beloved product or the most widely grown products that you see from the producers? In general, obviously, it's gonna vary from place to place, but what do you think it is? Let's say tomatoes, sweet corn. I think most of America is tomato crazy, and especially the, the more heirloom varieties, the, the weird and wacky ones that you can buy at the farmer's market. You can't buy those at the grocery store. Right. Uh, you get the, the standard slicing tomato at the grocery store. Uh, so I think that's, that's common for both home gardeners. Uh, if they're growing vegetables, usually their, their segue into growing vegetables is tomatoes. Uh, and at the farmer's market, um, it's very common. Almost every stand at the farmer's market will have tomatoes and almost all of them will sell. Um, and you know, we're off, off tomato season now, but there are some hydroponic and greenhouse growers, and those are some of the busiest stands at the farmer's market. I saw lines this past week at the, the stand that was selling tomatoes, and it, they were not cheap, yeah. uh, <laughs> but they were still buying them. Well, and 
they're tomatoes, they're still not the same as a tomato that has its roots in the soil and, and is ripening for the mm -hmm. 4th of July. So. Yeah, that's one of the deals with those. So I'm thinking of things, for example, like the pumpkins that come from specific places or the melons that seem to come from that great sandy soil up in sort of northeast Nebraska. And I know farmers markets also have really, a lot of the, the vendors seem to have expanded into products like fresh chickens or eggs or meats, those kinds of products, correct? Yeah, that is correct. I do know that a lot of growers are also wanting to extend their season. Nebraska doesn't have mm -hmm. the luxury of having more than one growing season in a calendar year. so. We've seen a large increase in the interest of growers wanting to extend their season through either uh, load covers, uh, high tunnels, uh, something they can do to extend it, and that's led to uh, some pop-up of a few winter markets in Nebraska. Which is pretty cool to be able to find something that is, you know, local to begin right. with and, and really fresh. So can anybody who wants to open a farmer's market just pop one up and start selling things? That's your job. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, you both looked at each other like, okay, who's gonna field this question? I get that question a lot at the department <laughs> and um, from people calling in and I tell them that there's really no restriction or any rules to follow per se. I tell them to check with their village or county or city to see if there's some type of ordinance that they need to follow out there. A lot of markets set their own parameters as to what they will allow and how many growers they will have. And if you close down a street, that too can involve some cost out there. So talk with the city or the county or the village um, or the township there to find out if there's anything they need to adhere to. In terms of the growers themselves, I, make, I tell them that they need to find their, their method of sale. Uh, also, it's good that they carry along some liability insurance for themselves as an individual grower. So, so is there a, how do people know, and this is, this is probably a question directly associated with the flooding and, and the concerns about food safety, but how, how do people who visit a farmer's market know that the produce that they wish to purchase is safe? So that, that's a good question, and that's one that, you know, the nice thing about going to the farmer's market is that you can actually talk to the farmer. Um, and in many cases, if you're a regular, you can establish a relationship with them to, to really know. Um, so there are, there are some, some sort of rules and guidelines um, that, uh, that we help with. So there are some trainings that we offer to farmers uh, for farm food safety. Uh, so we have several of us in Extension that are trained to offer that, and there's some certifications around that. Um, however, usually the, the folks that are selling at the farmer's market uh, have, are small enough that they don't, they're not required to follow those. Um, so it's really about that relationship and about knowing, knowing the farmer. Uh, but if you, if you actually take a look at the numbers uh, and look at you know, the instances of foodborne illnesses, they're much lower for locally grown food than say the food that you buy at the grocery store just because of volume and the way that it's, that it's treated and packaged. Um, as for the flood, you know, we've been trying to get the information out uh, to home gardeners and to growers about you know, what is safe if, if the ground has been flooded, then technically, you know, you can grow stuff on it after that waiting period, but we're recommending that farmers don't just because of the liability. Uh, but really, you just have to talk to the farmer. Mm -hmm. so, so nobody really goes and inspects the farmer's markets, or is that kind of a case-by-case -case basis? If you sell some type of uh, food products, then we do send out our inspectors uh, mm -hmm. to make sure that they follow their... Uh, food code out there and that gets a little bit beyond my scope of work but our department does uh, oversee that um, to make sure that that's the case. But with selling fresh produce really there really is no requirement unless they sell a certain threshold number of products then uh, then uh, there's some more things you may have to jump through but uh, otherwise with fresh produce it's um, there's not a lot of rules to follow. So. How do people actually know that what is being sold is truly grown locally? 
Well, one way to know is that, you know, you're not going to buy local watermelons in May. Uh, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's true. No matter how hard you try. No matter try. how hard you try. Um, <laughs> so typically, a lot of the, 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 quote, true farmer's markets, they, they actually do have an inspection process or a, a mm -hmm. registration process. Uh, where they will, they possibly could go inspect the farm to see, you know, if you're selling 15 different produce items and you have three tomato plants on your farm, then you're probably not growing what you sell. Um, so there's typically a little more of a guarantee if you're going to an actual farmer's market. Uh, and they also look for that safety kind of information. So a lot of the farmer's markets police that themselves for those smaller growers. Um, where you could run into trouble is like um, if someone just sets up a roadside stand, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they set up in a parking lot somewhere or beside the road. Um, there's really not a way, there's not a market there that's governing that. So you basically have to, to either ask or to know what is in season uh, because I've, I've seen this large farm stand that everyone goes to buy their local watermelons in June uh, and <laughs> I know that they're not local but exactly maybe they're from this country they're just yes they might be from this country from, somewhere but yeah, yeah. exactly and local means different to everybody it does uh, we yeah. run some programs where local is defined in Nebraska and a county adjacent to Nebraska state lines we talk to other people they think local is Midwestern mm -hmm. uh, sure. so it's all hey, everybody has their own definition in terms of locale as to how they de define local exactly and speaking of local you know we'd love to get your feedback as we are live on Facebook, so send us your comments, talk back and forth, let us know whether the kinds of um, things that we're talking about, like today on farmer's markets, are something that you're really interested in, because of course that lets us know what we should bring you next, and even for Backyard Farm itself, what should we do for segments? So talk to us in one way or another on social media. All right, so what are, are there incentives or opportunities for grants or nutrition certificates or you know those sorts of opportunities either for producers or farmers market vendors or even the people that are visiting farmers markets i know from our department we administer about three different federally funded programs that are designed to uh, increase markets uh, increase foot traffic to markets, uh, increase farm profits especially is what I'm really focused on. Mm -hmm. One of the programs is the Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program that provides coupons to low-income citizens that they can use to purchase local produce from any certified farm stand that's been certified through us. That's done across the state. Coupons are available through senior centers. Uh, farmers that are certified simply stamp their number on the coupon and they can take it to a bank and they cash like a check. With our WIC Farmers Market Program, it's basically the same program, just serves a different clientele. Mm -hmm. Those coupons are only dispersed in the Omaha area. And there's also a Double Up Food Buck Program that provide incentives to SNAP participants that want to purchase local produce. So there are certain markets and a few grocery stores that honor and support the Double Up Food Bucks program. Yeah, uh, so we do quite a bit of education and, and information around, especially the Double Up Food Bucks program mm -hmm. with Extension. Uh, and so we've really been promoting that because any anyone who has received SNAP benefits, you just basically go to the farmer's market and there's usually an information booth there. Um, and you take your benefits card and you basically, you would purchase $10 worth of tokens. So and that's a system that farmer's markets use. Um, sometimes if you don't bring cash uh, and they don't have an ATM, like you give them your credit card and you put $20 on it and they give you $20 in tokens. Uh, if you use your SNAP benefit card at those participating farmers markets, uh, you basically do 10 or $20 and you get double what uh, you put on your card, so you have that to spend. And that's, as Casey says, you know, it has multiple benefits because mm -hmm. it's benefiting the low income individuals who need that produce, but it's also driving traffic to the farmer's market and also increasing the benefit to the farmers that they're making more money by making those sales. So we've, we do nutrition programming around that. We even do um, like farmer's market tours with some of those uh, clientele where we actually take them through the market and like here's how you grow this or how, how you buy this stuff and how mm -hmm. you prepare it. Because a lot of people, 
if you handed them some weird squash or melon, they're not going to know how to produce, you know. Or carrot. even is it thumping the melon? The, right, the how to pick a ripe or, one and right. you know, all of that information. I know with our senior program, our redemption rate is around 90% every year. My goodness. Brings in about $181,000 with the senior program. With our WIC program, it's a much smaller program, but the redemption rate is around 40 to 50%. I think some of it goes back to what did they do with a product they mm -hmm. just purchased? How do I, what do I do with this cucumber or this sweet corn, or corn or this summer squash show? What is being done? So what we've tried to do is host some cooking demonstration. We'll hire a chef to come in and make, spin some demos at the state fair every year, uh, using there at the Raising Nebraska building there, mm -hmm. and makes up some short recipes using local produce as an ingredient, and then we give out cookbooks to everybody who attends, and all those cookbooks have products that are grown in Nebraska, and those items are an in integral part of each of those recipes. I think there's about 80 different recipes in that paperback cookbook. That's pretty fabulous. That's that's pretty cool. So, who is the ideal farmer's market visitor? How much time do they spend? Do they bring their children? Is it a festival or is it a grab and go? I've done some research on that. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I have my notes with me. But, you know, they're basically, uh, farmers want to ask, who should I target in sure. terms of selling my products yeah. out there? And generally, they're 25 to 44 years old. They're uh, primarily female, about 50, 55%. They're usually married, have a college degree. They're fully employed. They're a smartphone user. They're, they have a social media profile. They're looking for fresh, high-quality products is one of their top reasons they go to a market. They want locally grown products, and we talked about that. And also, increasingly, and we talked about that, food safety is important to those consumers as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think if you go to a farmer's market, it is, it, I think it's part shopping and part social sure. uh, activity. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why you see a lot of farmer's markets will have some sort of entertainment, mm -hmm. um, whether it's like they bring, actually bring in a concert or someone to play, or I know the farmer's market we go to in Omaha, they allow especially like younger music students to come and like this, this past Sunday at the farmer's market, like there was a random cello player, you know, right. amongst the stands <laughs> that was playing cello. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we, we typically go to the grocery store and try to get in and out as fast as possible, but we spent four hours at the farmer's market. Uh, now, part of that is because uh, the one we go to in, in Omaha on Sunday is in Axarban Village, and we sit at, at uh, the cocktail lounge before we start shopping <laughs> and have breakfast. Breakfast. <laughs> yeah. There so, are tomatoes involved, right? There are tomatoes involved, yes. yes. <laughs> and maybe celery. Yes, celery. <laughs> there are, there's different uh, farmer's market uh, consumer segments. You know, some are market enthusiasts. They just really enjoy going to the market, seeing what's there, uh, seeing who's there. Uh, there are also the recreational shoppers that maybe they go to a market they're really not looking for anything specific, but maybe they might find something that really trips to the trigger. Maybe they like that um, type of produce that they buy from that grower every year. They're those are the serious shoppers. They go out, they seek the specific grower they want to buy where you can get the best uh, ripened tomatoes because he's got the biggest varieties. And there's some of the basic shoppers. I went to the grocery store, but I came out, I'm going to swing through the market. That way I can get more of the fresh produce, and that's why I skipped maybe some of the produce areas in the grocery store. Uh, so each market has its own characteristic, its own demographic out there as to uh, its own chemistry. Well, and I think about, you know, going to the farmer's markets here in Lincoln because I go to both of them, not every week, but... Uh, and I've been going for years and years and years, and I know exactly who has what. Mm -hmm. And I, oftentimes I will go and spend a couple hours, but it's, you know, go get coffee and wander back through, and then I forgot something, or then something else piques my interest, and especially depending seasonally on specific items that are either going to end up on the, the dinner table that night, or, you know, in some instances, a lot of the markets have uh, craft wear or objects or, or items that are really unique and make great gifts or just fun to look at, if, if nothing else. So that makes it a lot of fun, too. Yeah. I think one of the great things about a farmer's market is you actually get to know the story of your food yeah. uh, because you actually get to talk to the farmer. 
Um, and uh, in the day of social media, a lot of the farmers will actually have uh, very vibrant, vibrant social media accounts. Uh, there's a lot of them that you know we shop at uh, every week, and you know they actually tell the story of their farm and what right. they're growing on social media, and you follow along, and then you chat with them, and you know their family, and uh, it's very interesting. Um, I uh, have a picture I took this past Sunday. Uh, one of our, our favorite farmers at the market uh, he was standing out front with a cardboard sign that said, I'm a farmer, ask me anything. And he was answering any question that anyone oh gave boy. him. Uh, so he was answering some very tough questions when I was there. Well, that's uh, pretty neat. So, but they, a lot of farmers are, are really getting into that community aspect and telling the story of their farm, their family, and the food that you're eating. Wonderful. One final question, which is how do people find a farmer's market in their area? We have a website that we launched a couple of years ago, and it's ne.gov slash go slash ne produce. And it lists okay. 100 farmers markets on there and the 590 produce growers out there. You can search by uh, close to where you live, by city, by county. If you're looking for a specific grower, you can type that in as well. That website is free of, uh, to use, and we encourage people to go there so they can find it. You can look at it on your smartphone or at your uh, computer to find growers and markets close to where they live. So we will make sure that we actually put that up on Facebook and right. talk about that. Yeah, As always, can, John on Backyard Farmer. Yes, and I think you can just Google Nebraska Farmers Markets and it'll get sure. you there. Good old yeah. Google. Yeah, Google. <laughs> right. Get you anywhere you want to go. Right. And sometimes places you don't. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> well, you know, that is also all the time we do have for Digging Deeper with Backyard Farmer tonight. You can watch a new Digging Deeper on Facebook every Sunday night at 6.30 p.m. Central. Do not miss Backyard Farmer Live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Central on NET. So thanks for digging deeper with Backyard Farmer.